Nigeria to Somalia, especially for those of us who are very much aware of really what is happening in Somalia. It's on daily basis, within a week, at least two journalists in most cases are killed or they are either assaulted. And, and, and I think uh, there is no how you can compare Nigeria to Somalia as far as the issue of press freedom and freedom of expression is concerned. But even at then, uh, we felt that uh, there should be a committee to verify some of these claims. And uh, uh, I think by, by tomorrow also we'll be able to come up with our position as a, as a union that is in charge of all media organizations in this country. Now, one of the things that was mentioned is uh, being able to apprehend the killers of journalists. Uh, would you say that we've done very well in that particular regard, in being able to apprehend those responsible for the deaths of journalists? Well, I think that is where we have some challenges because if you trace history right from 1986 when Delegua was killed to date, there are quite a number of journalists that have been killed. And unfortunately, the security personnel and the security agencies have not, of course, they have not apprehended. But, but I want to believe that efforts have been made by both the union and the security agencies to ensure that there is sort of collaboration to apprehend those who are responsible for this unfortunate act. But the most disturbing trend, actually, you are right, up to this time, we have not seen anybody that has been found wanting that is caught and then prosecuted before the court of law. And I think that is a very, very serious challenge on the part of the security agencies. But, but what we are saying that even at then, if you look at the number of journalists, especially uh, in a situation where it involves government, for instance, we are now in a democratic setup. Uh, there has never been an instance where probably journalists were killed in the cost of either trying to investigate or trying to discharge their social responsibility. The, the latest one I, I, I want to believe was as a result of the crisis which we have in insurgencies that is actually taking place in different parts of the country. And the general trend of insecurity that is now a challenge in this country so I think uh, journalists like uh, most Nigerians who happen to be victims of such insur in, in, in insurgencies have uh, been killed and uh, unfortunately uh, those who are responsible for those acts have not been arrested and then prosecuted. We have this challenge and I think uh, it is not only on the part of journalists, it is a general trend in Nigeria and, and I believe that... Uh, government and the security agencies who are responsible to investigate, arrest and prosecute. They are giving us all the assurances and we still have the confidence that uh, uh, in the near future they will be arrested. All right, just give us a moment. We'll have to go for the headline news. We'll be back to uh, continue and wrap up this matter. But we'll have to take a moment for the headline news with Melinda Akinlami. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much, Chamberlain. The Nigerian Air Force community and indeed the entire nation are in mourning following the crash of its Air Force Alpha Jet at Dago Village in Niamey, Niger Republic, which claimed the lives of the two pilots on board. The Alpha Jet aircraft is one of the four bays in Niamey as part of the African-led support mission in Mali. And the president had a meeting with Nigerians living in South Africa. At the meeting which took place in Cape Town, the president identified four key areas which his government is taking up as priority. Now, top of the four is corruption, which he says has been over-amplified by commentators and politicians. Bicotney says it's crossing the first hurdle in its contest on the revocation of its lease agreement with the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. In a ruling yesterday by a federal high court in Lagos, the preliminary objection of the federal government challenging the suit was dismissed by Justice Mohammed Idris. 
And on the foreign scene, the Syrian government warned that Sunday's strikes, which followed one last week attributed by Syria to Israel, opens new possibilities. Yesterday, an airstrike occurred in Syria, one which the country says was carried out by Israel. Israel is, however, yet to comment. And those are the headlines. It's back to you, Chamberlain. All right, thank you very much indeed, Melinda. Well, let's get back to this one. Uh, we still have um, Gabor Mohammed, president of NUJ, joins us from our uh, Bujia studios. Give us your impression or your thoughts then. What do you think about press freedom in Nigeria? Well, I think, uh, as I said from the beginning of this program, in Nigeria, we are fortunate that uh, we are able to achieve a high level of uh, press freedom here in this country, especially in this uh, democratic setup. Normally, when you have uh, cases of uh, abuse of press freedom, our thinking is that it can only be uh, visible during the military era. And now that we are in a democratic setup, we have seen quite a number of improvements. We have seen quite a number of policies and programs that are geared towards enhancing the press freedom and freedom of expression in this country. For instance, uh, if you look at the Freedom of Information Act that was duly signed in 2011 by Mr. President, is one of the policies and programs which, which I believe Will, will guarantee press freedom and enhance journalism profession in this country. And I'm happy that we have it and uh, uh, it's Nigeria is one of the few countries in, in, in Africa that has achieved uh, the Freedom of Information Act. Though there are quite a number of challenges in terms of the implementation of the Freedom of Information Act, but I want to assure you that uh, the NUJ and the stakeholders are working hand in hand and some international organizations like uh, the UNDP among others to ensure that uh, we intensify on sensitization so that uh, quite a number of Nigerians and of course the journalists would be able to utilize the Freedom of Information Act to enhance uh, especially investigative journalism in Nigeria. So my own opinion and, and based on my practical experience of what is happening in Africa and what is happening in journalism, I strongly believe that Nigeria has achieved a high level of press freedom of, and freedom of expression in this country. Public access to information, because when you say that, uh, well, we have uh, some relative freedom in getting some of those, people would still want to ask about well, public access to information in relation to this uh, well, Freedom of Information Act. How easy has it been for journalists in the country? Well, I, I think the major problem we have is, is, is the issue of people reading and understanding the content of the Freedom of Information Act. Unfortunately, since after the signing of the Act, Quite a number of uh, our colleagues and quite a number of Nigerians have, have not read and comprehend the Freedom of Information Act. And if you don't read a document and understand such a document, it will virtually be very difficult for you to know what, for instance, what are the processes that are involved in seeking for an information. At the same time, on the part of government, especially the public officers, it is also pertinent that for them to understand also the content of the Freedom of Information Act. It is only by so doing that when you seek and apply for such information, uh, the officer in charge will be able to know what are the processes that are involved in releasing such information. So I think our basic problem is with regards to the implementation on our part. And the implementation has to do with issue of sensitization and I'm happy that uh, quite a number of us are involved in the sensitization and uh, there are quite a number of people who even attempted to, to implement 
the Freedom of Information Act by seeking for an information. There are quite a number of some few cases where information are not given from various organizations and, and so, such cases.